Let's discuss more on the molecularity of a reaction. Another property of reaction called molecularity helps in understanding its mechanism. The number of reacting species atoms, ions or molecules taking part in an elementary reaction which must collide simultaneously in order to bring about a chemical reaction as called as molecularity of a reaction. The reaction can be unimolecular when one reacting species involved for example ammonium nitrite. It decomposes to give nitrogen and water. So let's talk about further on molecularity of reaction. Biomolecular reaction involves a simultaneous collision between two species. For example, the dissociation of hydrogen iodide to hydrogen and iodide or iodine. It can be termed as iodine 2, iodine. Trimolecular or termolecular reaction involves a simultaneous collision between three different reacting species. So that's referred to as termolecular reaction. So I got my nitric oxide with oxygen gives nitrogen dioxide. The probability that more than three molecules can collide and react simultaneously. Hence, the molecularity is greater than three is not absorbed. It is therefore evident that the complex reactions involving more than three molecules in a stoichiometric equation must take two steps or it can be more than one step. I got my potassium chlorate with the ferrous sulfate and sulfuric acid gives you potassium chloride, iron sulfate and water. Let me tell you a 3D of how the synthesis and the double displacement and displacement reactions are happening. I got hydrogen here H2 with the chlorine. It will merge to form HCl. Let's move on. As I told I got my hydrogen and chlorine is going to mix up to give the liquid HCl. Since both are gases you are able to see it is also in the gaseous state. This is called a synthesis process. Now let's move on to the decomposition. I got a typical mixture calcium carbonate which will become calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Solid becomes solid and gas. It's decomposition. Now we'll move on to the single displacement copper sulfate and iron is here. Iron plus copper sulfate will become iron sulfate. The ferrous and the copper sulfate become ferrous sulfate and copper. Single displacement is happening replaced by one thing. Now we got double displacement. This will leave this one and this will leave this one. Silver nitrate with the potassium chloride become potassium chloride. So silver chloride and potassium nitrate. This is called as a double displacement. Displacement in both the direction. Another one is combustion. So methane with the oxygen will become carbon dioxide and water. This is referred to as combustion technique. The burning of methane in the presence of oxygen. This is your combustion happening. So here is the equation I have told. This reaction which apparently seems to be of 10th order is actually a second order reaction. This shows that this reaction takes place in various several steps. It can't be a single step process, it's having a several steps. So which step controls the rate of the overall reaction? That's my question. The question can be answered if you go through the mechanism of reactions. For example, chances to win the relay race competition by a team depend upon the slowest person in the team. That's obvious. <laughs> Let's move on. 
Similarly, the overall rate of their reaction is controlled by the slowest step in your reaction, called the rate determining step. So consider the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide, which is catalyzed by the iodide ion in an alkaline medium. The rate of the reaction can be given as rate equal to minus d of hydrogen peroxide by dt is equal to k of h2o2 and iodine. This reaction is first order with respect to both H2O2 and iodine. So, the evidence suggests that this reaction is taking place in two steps. One is dihydrogen dioxide or hydrogen peroxide. It can be termed as hydrogen peroxide. With iodine gives water and iodide, its ion. In dihydrogen dioxide, with iodide ion will give water, iodine ion and oxygen. This is a two step process. So both these steps are bimolecular elementary reactions. Species IO- is considered as an intermediate since it is formed during the course of the reaction but not in the overall balance of reaction. Thus, the rate of formation of intermediate will determine the rate of the reaction. So everything depends on this one, the intermediate product. So from the discussion, we conclude the following things. Order of your reaction is an experimental quantity. It can be zero or even a fraction but molecularity cannot be zero or a non-integer. Order is applicable to elementary as well as complex reactions, whereas molecularity is applicable only for elementary reactions. For complex reactions, molecularity will be having no meaning. So, for complex reactions, order is given by the slowest step and generally molecularity of the slowest step is same as the order of the overall reaction.